Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. On this episode, we're gonna be talking about knee injuries in dogs and specifically the cruciate ligament tear and sort of surgeries to correct and most importantly, exercises you can do at home before to avoid these injuries and afterwards to help your dog recover. So stay tuned. All right, thanks for joining me. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about knee injuries in dogs and specifically the two X ligaments. And they're, they're the X ligaments and they're called the cruciate or cruciatus, like the cross. The X ligaments in the knees that are also known as the ACL. And the ACL is a common sort of sports injury in people, basketball, soccer, baseball, basically any sort of sport. Commonly people injure this knee and dogs get it really, really quite commonly. In fact, about 85% of all dogs that come into a clinic with hind leg lameness, so regardless of age, breed, size, history, 85% of them actually have injuries to this ligament. It's a, a very, very weak ligament and something where the way the dogs stand on their toes and kind of lean forward because they're standing on all four feet, that, that ligament has a, an incredible amount of constant strain on it. So. The first thing that's going to happen is the veterinarian is going to obviously examine your dog from head to toe and make sure there's nothing wrong with the back and actually will often check the good leg first as kind of a comparison. But if they do sort of focus on the knee and if it is a cruciate tear, they're going to find a couple of things. Um, they may find some resistance to bending that knee. They're going to find a, a, a symbol or a signal of what we call crepitus or kind of clicking. Um, this sort of snapping and, and crunching and clicking in the knee. And that's because often with these ligament tears, there's often uh, cartilage damage or what are called meniscal tears as well. They may get an actual, um, if it's a chronic injury, they'll get a calcification of the inside of the knee of the joint capsule called a medial buttress. Um, so they'll feel that and they may get some swelling specifically on the inside of the knee. Uh, so some medial joint capsule swelling as well. So basically, this is just gonna tell them though that it is the knee that's the problem. And again, the veterinarian's gonna know that this is likely a cruciate injury because again, 85% of all dogs come in with hind leg lameness, have an injury to this knee. So what they're gonna need to do is they're gonna, unfortunately gonna need to sedate your dog. Uh, and they do this because they're gonna do an orthopedic exam and, it, and check the instability of that knee. So as we know, the knee kind of bends like this, right? As a, a normal hinge. Well, the cruciate stops the, that shin, stops the lower half of the leg from sliding forward. And the veterinarian needs to check to see if that instability exists. It's called doing a, a tibial thrust test or a drawer sign. It's kind of like pulling a drawer out of a, out of a cupboard. Um, so a drawer sign. And wiggling the knee like that, as you can imagine, is painful. So they need to sedate your dog so that he or she isn't painful, and also so that they relax the muscles and allow for that drawer sign to potentially happen. They're also gonna to wanna to do some x-rays. And you can't actually see the cruciate ligament on x-rays, but what you can see are other signs that are quote, suggestive of a cruciate tear. There's gonna be certain areas of, of fluid and kind of cloudy buildup of this fluidy kind of foggy uh, appearance on the x-ray and that's going to show that inside the joint itself is inflamed they're going to rule out things like tumors and fractures and, and severe arthritis and degeneration they'll also if they bend the knee at a 90 degree or more angle they'll see a forward displacement a forward movement of that shin because that drawer sign exists and then the other thing they're going to want to do is radiograph your dog's hips a lot of dogs have torn cruciate ligaments in one knee because the opposing hip has hip dysplasia or arthritis. So over the years, the dog is putting more and more weight in kind of an unbalanced manner onto that knee and eventually that, that ligament sort of stretches too much and gets torn. And your veterinarian is gonna to wanna to know that if surgery is gonna happen, what are the other supporting structures like? What's the other knee like and what are these hips like? And unfortunately, dogs do need to be sedated for hip x-rays because they kind of have to line their back with their legs straight and parallel. And then we've got to internally rotate them. It's kind of like this strange yoga position. It doesn't hurt, but there's no way you're going to get a dog to sit like that still so that you can take a proper radiograph. So 
Once the diagnosis is made though, then the veterinarian, the surgeon can tell you if surgery is necessary. And I'm gonna say in 90% of the cases, unfortunately, surgery is necessary. Now there's different techniques. There's TTAs, TPLOs, extra capsulars, over the tops, all kinds of different types of techniques based on the size of the dog, the age of the dog, and also sort of the density and the thickness of the bone, and then the angle of the of the resting shelf of the of the of the shin bone, the tibia. So sort of how sloped that knee ligament is, or that knee uh, that knee bone is. So it's something that the surgeon gets to decide. I kind of joke that the that the owner doesn't get to choose which technique is right. Mother Nature gets to choose which one is right, and then they're going to be able to walk you through the the, the steps for recovery. Now there's a couple things you can do to help prevent this. Unfortunately, it is somewhat genetic in the sense that dogs are susceptible, um, not only because they're goofy and they run and they catch frisbees and they chase squirrels and they turn on a dime and they don't stretch and they don't do yoga you know, beforehand, they don't warm up before they run around. Um, but there are some simple things you can do at home. By far, the number one thing is you've gotta keep your dog at a proper body weight. Being overweight puts a lot of stress on the joints. It's bad for the heart, bad for the back, bad for the liver, increases cancer. Basically, dogs that are overweight don't live as long. But as far as the cruciate is concerned, it, it, it adds load to that joint. So you have to keep your dog at a proper weight and proper sort of musculature. So a lot of exercise, hiking and controlled running and and things of that nature obviously talk to your veterinarian and make sure that these things are appropriate for your specific dog um, and then there are some exercises that you can do as well now these exercises that i'm going to show you in a minute uh, we did on my dog thalia um, they're uh, they're good to do beforehand just to kind of keep that 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 body strong um, as a preventative measure to keep the the thighs like the quads and the glutes and the hamstrings and the calves all nice and strong and the core but they're also very very good as a post recovery so find your uh, kind of cool 80s rock and roll music and turn it on and get ready to exercise and, and enjoy these videos thanks for joining me we're gonna go over a handful of exercises some of them you can do before cruciate injury just as a preventative and it feels so good to the puppy and then some that you can do after surgery as well. So the first one which you should be doing all the time especially after long runs or long hikes uh, and definitely about four to six weeks after surgery but your veterinarian will tell you when is the right time is to do some massage and passive range of motion. So basically come here yes you can have them lying down or they can be sitting up and you're going to want to take the injured leg and again do it for all four legs after a run or after hiking and you're going to want to go through the full range of motions. So you push up to the hip, all the way out, up to the hip, we're going to get her to stand up. We're going to do a massage, massage, that's what she likes to call it. So we're going to stretch the hip out, bring it in close and kind of tight. Stretch the hip out and bring it in close. And also, you massage those muscles. There, she likes this. You massage the muscles and kind of just quickly rotate those joints. If you're going to do this before surgery, it kind of like as a preventative, it kind of just helps you find scar tissue and helps keep flexibility uh, from becoming an issue. Uh, but after surgery, it allows for blood flow and breakdown of scar tissue and clots and gets their, uh, their range of motion back quickly. Be sure to kind of massage the back as well and then do the same thing basically on the front legs as well. So before and after major exercise and then uh, maybe a month after surgery as well. The next exercise to do, which can be done regularly as a preventative, is the kind of the sit squat. So you get them to stand straight, you have your dog sit, and to not puppy sit, so this is, this is proper. She's sitting equally on all four feet. She wants to play. And you basically, 10 times, three sets of 10 every day, you get them to properly sit. I know. Come here. Sit. Good girl. And then come here. Up. Good girl. Sit. Up. And 
you can give her a little pull. And what you want to do, and that's all, you just get them to sit and stand, sit and stand. And you just make sure they don't walk forward, that they're properly standing up. So then the next three exercises are ones you really only have to do after, after surgery. Talk to the surgeon, make sure depending upon the technique that it's the right time. But generally four to six weeks after you can do it. So one of them is going to be the lean test. You get them to stand. And let's assume that this is the injured leg, the one that had surgery. You literally just push her towards the injured leg. And that's just going to get her to realize that she can put more and more weight on that leg. Do that 10 times. You kind of hold it for two or three seconds each time. 10 times, two to three times a day. And do it for a few weeks and it's going to help significantly. The next one you're going to want to do is the three-legged stance. So we're going to assume that that is the injured leg. You get her to stand. And you just ask for a paw from the opposite front leg. So if that is the one that had surgery, say paw, and you hold it. And it automatically, you see her kind of tilt to that injured side. Or if that was the injured leg, it has her put more weight on it. Paw, good girl. This builds up sort of body placement awareness and coordination and strengthens that leg. The last one, we're going to take her for a little bit of a walk, is we want to do tight circles. And basically, you take them for a walk, and you do these four 360-degree circles and it, on both directions, so clockwise and counterclockwise. And that crisscross of the feet that she's going to end up doing teaches her how to place those feet. It basically gives her kind of coordination. So, you always want to have her on the inside of you so that her, her walks are really tight. You see, you're going to almost... So she's going right in the same sort of spot. And then, do it this way. You gotta, gotta get, oh, I know. I know, good girl. Do you sit? There you go. So those are the exercises for preventative maintenance on the, uh, the hips and the knees and the lower legs, um, as well as some exercises to do usually four to six, after four to six weeks after surgery. And then at the end, make sure you give her a big, big belly rub. Oh, see, good girl. And that's it. Thanks for watching. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and comment and ask me questions and share and do all those things. And obviously, as I always say at the end of every episode, be kind to animals.